friends, I want you to put your feet down into the earth and feel the sacred ground upon which we are on. Allow the beautiful breeze to blow through you and feel the spirit that is within us and amongst us. See and feel the strength of the sun and know that with it comes the strength of the sun, Jesus the Christ. As we gather here on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe and the Haudenosaunee peoples, the Huron and the Wendat, we gather as family, smaller today, but still family, a community of faith, of people who love one another and love their God and love their church. Might this be a place where we are all blessed and inspired to be God's people on this day. I want to welcome you here. We want to celebrate that Laura Demers is out of hospital and here with us this morning. Mary Catherine is out of hospital and here with us this morning. Lorna Thorne is home from Croatia and all things global. And it's her husband Tom's birthday, but he's not here, so don't sing. <laughs> But we do send our blessings to him. And we are also blessed this morning that the Reverend Dr. Orville Janes and his wife Nancy are here with us right in the very back row. But blessings to you. We're so grateful. And we welcome you. We also want to bless Gordon and Sandra, who've entered into their new house this week, a new chapter in their lives and we also want to bless Joyce and Michelle, because in just a few short hours, they're going on vacation. <laughs> to which we are so grateful. But fear not, I'm taking my phone with me. So should you have any needs over the next month, feel free to call or to text. If there are issues that you need a little extra love, a little extra support, a little extra prayer, let us know because we are always here for you. For one of those weeks, Stephanie is also going to be on holidays uh, from the 29th of July until the 7th of August. So the church office will be closed during that time. So Alma, you have her number and God bless her. She can do anything here. And so if you have office needs or pastoral care needs, reach out to Alma, who's currently serving in our pastoral care ministry role, for which we are so, so grateful for the ministry that you offer. And during that week, she's going to uh, wear all hats necessary. Uh, if you have anything, reach out to Alma. Uh, and we are having the blessing of the next three weeks are our collaboration services. And those services are taking place at Princess Street, which is worshiping in collaboration with St. Luke's Anglican. And then Cook's Portsmouth and rounding up with Sydenham Street. So please be sure to take your Edith Rankin pride as you go about, but do go and visit other churches and collaborate with them uh, for these next three weeks. Then there will be no worship here at Edith Rankin. Then we return to Edith Rankin on August the 11th with the blessing of the Reverend Dr. Paul Curry. We are having a barbecue today. Joyce is on the barbecue, so please uh, plan to stay for lunch. And everything we're doing today is out of the soft-covered More Voices hymn books. If you didn't pick one up on the way in, give a wave, and Alma will be happy to deliver one for you. Excellent. Any other announcements of folks that I forgot? Perfect. Oh, boy, boy. got it, got it. All right, friends, let's come. Let's come and praise your maker. Let's come and worship the Lord. Let's sing together our introit. It's on page two of More Voices. Come, all you people. Oh, 
Friends, here in this place, we are family, sacred community that loves one another, who are called by God to come and worship, who are called by Jesus the Christ to come and follow, who are called by the Holy Spirit to come and rejoice. We are called on this day to gather to listen, to pray, to sing, to dance, for this is the day. Let's sing uh, This Is The Day. You'll find it on 120. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we gather to sing your praise and hear your word. So speak to us now. Speak to us so that we might be wise enough to perceive your call. Strengthen us now. Strengthen us so that we might be brave enough to answer your call. Guide us now. Guide us that we may follow you wherever you would have us go, so that in this summertime place we might go fishing and fish for justice and peace, mercy and grace, forgiveness and reconciliation. We pray these things in the name of Jesus the Christ, the true fisher. Friends, let's stand and sing together.
we don't have any children or young people with us this morning. I've been getting emails saying, we're off to camp, and we're going to the cottage, and I'm going to learn how to sail, and all kinds of fun things out in God's creation. And so I want you to remember our children and our young people and our young families in your prayers this week, knowing that they are off doing wonderful things. Our children's time for this morning was entitled, Swimming, swimming in the swimming pool when days are hot, when days are cool. You know that one? Uh huh. Breast stroke, side stroke, fancy diving too. <laughs> so, when you're doing all those things this week, make sure that you are doing it being held in the grace and the glory of God because that is who and how we are able to enjoy our some, some summertime in God's creation. But even with no children, we are all forever young. And so Kathy Lee is going to sing and share with us in this blessing of music, Forever Young. Here we go. Ooh. You can hear that. <laughs> That's kind of cool. Okay. Oh, no, sorry. I knew I'd forget. I've got a capo Put the thing. Capo on. Put the capo on, and then I can go. Okay, forgive me if it's not in tune. Okay. okay. Beautiful. Thank you, Kathy Lee. And hands up, how many were singing along? Uh huh. <laughs> Perfect. This is the time in our summertime worship where I always uh, ask out who would like to read scripture this morning? And so I'm going to be so bold as to actually ask maybe since he's here, the Reverend Dr. Orville James would like to read scripture this morning. And then everybody else is off the hook. 
You all think that's a good idea, don't you? <laughs> uh, we're reading uh, Luke 5, 1 to 11, and he probably doesn't need it, but I've got it written out for him just in case. Hi, good morning, everyone. Great to be with you. Our gospel is from the New International Version of Luke chapter 5. Let us together listen and hear Christ's teachings to the church today. One day, as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Jesus got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, Put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come, help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, Don't be afraid. From now on you will fish for people. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. For the teachings of God in Scripture, may we all be learners. For the directions offered by Jesus, may we all be followers. For the blessings shared by the Spirit, may we all be blessed. And for that, all God's people can say together, Amen. Amen. Just for the record, I'm not going to go to church next week, just in case I have to do something. <laughs> So it's summertime and we're at the lake. Let's go fishing. For our collaboration series that's happening this summer, we're doing it a little bit differently than we did last summer. And this year it's when other clergy are on holidays. So when I'm on holidays for the next three weeks, you're going to go and see other clergy Except when you get to Sydenham Street, there's been a change in the schedule, and Reverend Catherine Elsden is going to be on holidays that day too. So you're going to get to be able to hear part of their great lay leadership at Sydenham Street. And so Reverend Catherine, not ever being shy to work, sends us this gift this morning on the calling of the first disciples, the call to be followers. And do a little... Some, some, summertime fishing. In the medieval monastic tradition, it was not uncommon for monasteries to produce items, food, drink, and then sell them to the wider public to generate revenue. You may know still examples of such places that produce cheese or honey or beer. Maybe some of you have sampled. In the same tradition, one monastery went into the fish and chips business to build some revenue. And one evening, a customer knocked on the door, and a monk answered. And the customer asked, Are you the fish fryer? No, he replies, I'm the chip monk. <laughs> a 
now you can decide whether you're happy or not that Reverend Catherine's going to be on holidays. Fish and fishers are the theme of the gospel reading that we had for this week. Do we have anyone who loves to fish with us? We've got fishers. A bride last week, a fisher this week. You can do it all too. Most fishers have a great story to tell. And the story and the fish usually get bigger uh, the more times that you tell it. And, and maybe the same is true for our gospel reading this week as well. Dragnet fishing is what Simon Peter and his team were doing when they encountered Jesus on the shorelines of Collins Bay that back then they called the Sea of Galilee. Peter and his crew have tied up their boats after a long night of fishing. They would fish at night when the temperatures were cooler and the fish couldn't see the nets. But now morning has come and the crew are drying out their nets and they're mending them on the shore. And the fishers are tired and disheartened, but they have to tend to their gear because putting their nets away wet would cause them to deteriorate quickly. So as they are going about these tasks, they, they see a growing crowd. They come down to the shoreline to meet Jesus and hear what he has to say. Now this story takes place very early in Jesus' ministry still. Jesus had spent 40 days in the wilderness and a time of trial and spiritual discernment. And then he was beginning this time of traveling and teaching. Now, like all good prophets, he was plain out dismissed from his hometown of Nazareth, but he travels on and, and he offers to all that he meets spiritual and physical healing. In Capernaum, he enters into the house of Simon Peter's mother-in-law and heals her of a fever. My sister is very sick with COVID this morning, and so I want you to send from the shores of Collins Bay, otherwise known as the Sea of Galilee, Jesus healing to my sister in Toronto. Jesus' tour of teaching and healing continues, and interest in him starts to increase and, and spread out a little from town to town, interest to the extent that a real crowd starts to form on the morning on the banks of the lake. People came from Amherst View. People came from Bath. People came from Gananoque to hear this man called Jesus. It got to be that the crowds were growing and they were pressing in on him. And, and he thought, there needs to be a better way. I should get out on a boat so that people could see me and hear me. And so he says to Simon Peter, let me use your boat. And he roared, rose out a little from the shore. Simon Peter must have agreed because before we know it, there we see Jesus sitting on the boat and teaching the crowd. It's not actually recorded what he said or what he was teaching, but the most memorable lesson evidently is what happens next. Because after he says to Simon Peter, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. In between the lines of the text, you can hear Peter groan and sigh. He just finished a long night of fishing that proved absolutely fruitless. He's already dried his nets. He and his crew are tired and ready for bed. Master, 
He tells Jesus, we've worked all night, but have caught nothing. Peter is hesitant and skeptical. He doesn't want to do it. But something inside of him nudges him to try, to take a chance. Perhaps he has seen or heard enough about the character and the, the power of Jesus to trust him. Maybe he is testing Jesus. Maybe Jesus is testing him. But Master, he tells Jesus, we've worked all night and we have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down my nets. If you say so, I will let down my nets. So they row out into deeper water, let down the nets, and of course you know the ending of the story. They haul in such a big catch that they need to call over their partners and their friends in the other boat to help them. Such a catch that the boats are weighted down and threatening to sink. How wonderful and surprising and scary this must be. But what incredible luck after such a discouraging night. But that's not Peter's reaction. He understands immediately that this actually has nothing to do with fish and everything to do with the identity of Jesus. Simon Peter falls down at Jesus' knees and says, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinner, a sinful man. It's a kind of confession in that moment. Simon Peter understands that he is in the presence of the divine, of the holy, of greatness. And in contrast, he feels small and unworthy. This is not uncommon reaction to encounter the divine in the Bible. It's a kind of fear. Fear of the Lord is a repeated phrase in scripture that describes the right posture to have towards God. Someone was recently sharing that they understood this fear to be less about terror and more about respect. And I would agree completely and add to that a kind of shaken to your core awe. That's what Peter experiences. And I want you to think back to what you were doing at 322 on Monday, April the 8th of this year. Anybody remember? 3.22 on Monday, April the 8th of this year, we were all heaven bound watching the solar eclipse. We'd all read about the eclipse. We all had some understanding of the path of totality and felt blessed that we were in it. We all had some basic understanding of the science that was happening. (laughs) Somebody forgot to turn her phone off. I was texting my sick sister. She should know it's church time. (laughs) Anyway, back to where we were. We all had some basic understanding of the science of what was happening, but nothing actually could prepare us for the feeling of it, unless we had been around 700 years ago when it happened last. But the feeling... That moment that the temperature dropped, that moment that the birds ceased singing, that moment of the natural light going out, 
and the sun that's so bright and powerful we can't actually turn and look directly at it. This source of warmth and this large life force on our planet was suddenly transformed. The taking off of the glasses and looking up directly at the sun and this transformed world. The moon in its incredible darkness, surrounded by the light of the sun's corona. The yellow, the orange, the sun sets on the horizon in absolutely every direction from where we stood. The collective awe and wonder and excitement of every age and every generation in the clusters of people who witnessed this. It felt in that moment like we were in the divine. This powerful force, it was thrilling, it was humbling. Maybe you, like Simon Peter, felt small and unworthy while at the same time incredibly humbled and incredibly grateful. The mystery, the power, the grandeur of our God, of our Creator, something that we cannot look at directly is suddenly right there in our face on the boat, on the shores of our lives. It is humbling. He's not afraid to get too close. Even if we feel we don't deserve it. But Jesus offers to Simon Peter that day and to us this day the heavenly assurance repeated through the Gospels that Orville read for us today and throughout the Gospels. Do not be afraid. Say it with me. Do not be afraid. This is not a presence to fear. It is a presence that will inspire us. And this is a presence that will empower us. Peter started in the shallow water with Jesus in his boat. And then Jesus invites him to go deeper. And Peter's tempted to make excuses. I've tried that before. It doesn't work. I'm too tired. I'm not worthy. I'm not good enough. Maybe you've said some of those things too. I certainly know I have. Our participation in church and in this family, this community of faith, sometimes gets spent in shallow water, near the shores with Jesus, listening to his teachings, which is comforting and it's comfortable, and it's reassuring, and it is good, and it is necessary. But inevitably, Jesus is calling us to go deeper, to take action, to get out deeper with our spiritual practices, deeper with our self-reflection, deeper with our commitment, deeper with our care. For one another. This is the spiritual space in which we take risks. It requires trusting ourselves and trusting Jesus the Christ. But Jesus is in the boat with us and he says, and he says, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. And then he says to Peter, don't be afraid because from now on you're actually going to catch people. To which Peter does a what, what? But immediately afterwards, Peter and his fishing partners rowed ashore and they commit to following Jesus. 
Peter himself has gotten caught up in Jesus' movement. He wasn't coerced or manipulated. The very questions we asked our bride and groom last week, did you come here of your own free will? He listened. He watched. He experienced. And he experienced transformation. Something profound happened in the presence of Jesus, and he was caught up in the Spirit. In this moment in our world, where people get shot unnecessarily, in this moment in our world, when there is great doubt about who we are as individual people, as a community of faith, as a nation, as a world, where people sometimes feel worthless, we need to be caught in the net of Jesus' reassurance and love that says, do not be afraid. Because what if catching people means creating a safety net, a web of care and affirmation and justice that catches us when we falter so that we can hear those words, do not be afraid. This is participatory, friends, I forgot to tell you. That says, do not be afraid. What if catching people actually means fostering a spirit of joy and support and possibility and abundance that catches on so that people can hear, do not be afraid? And what if catching people actually means it's a spirit of love and grace that people get caught up in? that take hold and won't let us go, that moves in our hearts and our lives so that together as individuals and as a family, we might hear, do not be afraid. Peter says yes to Christ's invitation, and it sets his life in a new direction. It's the beginning anew. A new beginning that we are invited to also. It's an adventure of faith. It's the camping season of our lives. Because I believe that Christ is calling us to go deeper. Yes, maybe we have excuses or insecurities that might be holding us back. But let us individually and collectively hear the words of Jesus that say, do not be afraid. Let us grab hold of the net, trust in the Spirit of Christ, jump in the boat with Jesus, and do a little summertime fishing. And for that, all God's people can say, Amen. I hear we have some fishers amongst us and within us. That is good news. It is time for us to gather our hearts in prayer. I want to hear from you. What do you want to lift up in prayer this morning so that we might not be afraid? Who do we need to pray for? What do we need to pray for this morning? Charlotte. Mm-hmm. Carolyn May. I want us to lift up and pray for our neighbors to the south. When we don't agree, we can talk. When we don't agree, We can find another way. It is not the way to shoot one another. Indeed, David.
Yeah. Bless you. So take a minute to feel your presence in this space for the prayers of the people. We're going to sing from 156, and we're going to dance with the Spirit. We're going to sing. I'm going to speak. We're going to sing. I'm going to speak. We're going to sing. 156. Let's dance with the Spirit. Dance with the Spirit. Let's pray. God, giver of all good, you continually pour your blessings upon us, age after age, the living wait upon you, and find that your faithfulness has no end, that your care is unfailing. We praise you that the mystery of life is a mystery of infinite goodness. We praise you for the beauty and the bounty of the earth, for day and night, summer and winter, seed time and harvest, for the varied gifts of every season. We praise you for the shores of the seas of Galilee and Collins Bay, all the places where Jesus taught and Jesus' teachings continue. And we give you thanks for our ability to go deeper and fish for the love, compassion, and goodwill of all people so that together we might dance with the Spirit. Dance with the Spirit. O oh Christ, we come to you and we confess that we have worked all day and night for many months and many years. We confess that we yearn for a heavy catch, for an abundance feast, and for a rest from our labor. We confess that we have found excuses to not go deeper, to stay in the safety end of shallow rest. Forgive us, God, when we are too tired to cast out our nets one more time, when we are too stubborn to do things a little differently, and when we stay in the shallow end of life unwilling to go deeper. Have mercy upon us when we are too afraid to dive into the deep waters and take a risk, even when we know that you will affirm us in the end. Grant us, God, that we may proclaim your word, work for your realm, and trust in your promises. We are your children, O oh God, and we stand united, singing together, so that we might dance with the Spirit. Dance with the Spirit.
for these and all our prayers, all God's people can say, Amen. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as you're able or comfortable, and we're going to sing our closing hymn together. I want you to go from this place ready to hear the words of Jesus because he said, Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. For we gather on the shores of compassion and grace. We gather on the shores of mercy and forgiveness. We gather on the shores of teachings of love and love and love. So go from this place, ready to celebrate holidays, ready to explore and collaborate with other congregations, and ready to hear the words of Jesus that say, do not be afraid. And all God's people can say, Amen. Let's share our gratitude for Kim Barney, our music director, for Kathy Lee, our vocalist and soloist this morning, for Kathy Bear, our flautist, and for these two wild cats over here <laughs> holding up the music department. We are so grateful to Amy and to Alana, and of course to Heinz, who's working on our technical things today. Thank you all for all that you do to make this family. And you can thank Joyce and Lorna when you go over and grab a hamburger. Please stay for the barbecue this afternoon. <laughs>